So who goes first? I don't know. No, Is there? There's no. There's no script. <laughs> I don't think we have a script. No. How's it going? When did you get in? I got in on Sunday morning because I'm in a band called the Boxer Rebellion. Yes, and I heard. We, I wasn't familiar with the band. Yeah. To um, be very honest. We played the Paradiso. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I should, when was that? Sun Sunday night. Oh yeah, I wasn't here anyway. Yeah. I was touring. Otherwise, yeah. I would have come down for sure. Yeah, it was good. It was. Uh, we. We've been around a long time, and we but we haven't uh, toured in like five years. Oh yeah. So it was kind of nice to get back to. Yeah. But uh, so having like my what I've done for so long, and then immediately go straight into like kind of what <laughs> I'm doing now. It's uh, such different worlds. I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's been good, and I was last night uh, with uh, Tin Liquor. Um, okay. They played with the the Metropole Orchestra, so cool. I sang some, wow. sang some songs. Yeah, nice. Where was this? It was at the Melquig. It was like um, like so a room I'd not been in before, but mm -hmm. I think it's set up for orchestras. They can, wow, I didn't know they have an orchestra room. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, it was cool. It was quite intimidating. Yeah, it was like I was saying to John, it's fifty piece orchestra. Wow. And so I was kind of. <laughs> you know, like, I, I never really consider myself professional, even though I've been doing this for so long. You feel like an imposter a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they're all so good. So good at what they do. The, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think I had an interview somewhere with someone the other day, and I was talking about imposter syndrome as well. I also feel a bit like an imposter yeah. still, for some reason. I think it's a good thing. I guess so, yeah. It's, it, it kind of uh, gives you a little bit of... Um, down to earthness, I guess. Yeah, and I think it gives you like, you have a point to prove. You always feel like you maybe, have yeah, like, yeah, and uh, and also like, you feel like you don't have to. Um, you're always like learning. Yeah, I think if you feel like you've mastered something, then yeah. you, what's the point? No, that's very true. I actually come from a. It's a long time ago, but my my <coughs> interest in music started with uh, more rock music, mm -hmm. and I was I, I hated dance music when it when I was in my teens. And I think for some reason this is this is kind of engraved in my brain. Yeah, <laughs> I, d I I feel like I'm still cheating, you know, I'm, I'm right. cheating on my <laughs> on my roots. What were your rock roots? <laughs> my rock roots, even though like they've I've cut them cut them off. Um, quite a long time ago, but yeah. I still have a love for rock music, but. Um, Sometimes I'm like, I'm not really <laughs> supposed to be here. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's a very. I guess it's a different way of writing mm -hmm. rock music or alternative whatever. Yeah, how does it? What's how is it different for you writing for um, dance music, which you do a lot, and obviously your rock music as well. Um, I would say, well, dance music was is like a different collaborative effort. Uh, it's like, for instance, our tune, how, yeah, you know, you worked it into a different song, you know, from what it started out as. Whereas, like, in rock music, it kind of is, is what it, it is. It is what it is. And, and, yeah. and also, I think, I'm, lyrically, you're not, oh, at least I'm, ne I was ne I'm never trying to kind of, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be honest, I guess. And in dance music, you're trying to kind of, uh, be more I don't know like you're just trying to give people a better time so yeah, you're not yeah. trying to like reinvent yeah. the wheel yeah uh, it's a bit more simplistic maybe yeah to say that in a you don't want to be a downer basically. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so yeah. yeah it's funny because I, I just started making a remix for a Tom Walker oh right and it's a pretty intense song and it is um, I mean it's not a dance song and it's it's funny that you say that because the lyrics are also quite like hardcore <laughs> compared yeah. to dance music uh, lyrics. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, this is, and it's pretty full on singing, yeah. you know? So I'm like, oh my God, how's this going to work in a four to the floor track? Yeah. Um, I think it's working, but it's kind of uh, on the border of where I'm thinking, is this, is this going to work on the dance floor? Sure. I'm going to have to kind of, need, uh, you know, work around um, certain things that I normally wouldn't do in a, in a dance song. But I think yes. it, sometimes the outcome can be quite amazing, especially if, if there's some, an element that is very different than what people are used to in dance mm -hmm. music. As long as you try to place it well, it can actually work. Yeah. Uh, and is it all 
like, are you always, when you're doing a song like, or remixing a song, are you always thinking of live? Of playing it out? Like, yeah, as opposed to how it's going to be like a... Uh, like a Spotify song. Yeah. I do think about that, yeah. I mean, uh, I do nowadays even more because it's kind of important to have your songs being played um, by other DJs or mm -hmm. by myself. Um, and what I always try to find the balance, and this is the most complicated and difficult balance, yeah. between um, it, between a track being playable on the dance floor and uh, you know listenable like in a car or your yeah. I AirPods or whatever. I think that 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 balance that um, that's that's quite challenging. But uh, I think if you nail it, it, I think the success of a track can can really work. Yeah. And I really try to actually work on this with uh, you and I as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I really like it. Yeah, uh, thanks. I kind of because uh, the ori yeah the original song uh, had a has a a pre-chorus and a chorus yeah 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 and you got rid of the pre-chorus <laughs> and the chorus which i like at first i was like huh Wait a and minute. then then it was like oh it makes perfect sense it doesn't yeah. need, it doesn't need it i mean i um or what i i called the pre-chorus and chorus yeah you, you to know. be fairly honest i'm not a songwriter i i never really know what's the chorus or the first or yeah. the pre-chorus or the bridge or i know the bridge i think but <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a, it's a lot of terms that i don't use in my music yeah. especially because most of the time it's just one chord progression that stays yeah. the same. Maybe sometimes, you know, you just switch to, and I think in this case as well, you know, just you stay on one chord to start with and you end on, on one chord. Yeah. But in between, there's there's only one progression. Yeah. Um, and then I think with uh, with the, the, the lyrics that you, uh, and, and the melodies you wrote, I think that was a, quite a change, and it mm -hmm. just didn't didn't fit in the in the, in the way I had written the chord yeah. progression. And sometimes it's a bit distracting as well because, you know, uh, techno music or electronic dance music is quite linear. Yes. So then it, if halfway a song, things change quite dramatically, then, um, I don't know, it can throw people off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so. especially, I mean, going back to, like, the whole idea of, like, live. Yeah. Yeah. And taking people out of the moment when they're kind of, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, whatever they're on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or even, even you know, just listening to the music. Like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a very different uh, experience than going to a concert. I think with rock music, you do need the element of surprise sometimes. Yeah. I used to be a big Pixies fan when I was uh, yeah. young. And I think if there's one band that mastered the element of surprise was the Pixies, you know, with that yeah, loud like, and quiet. Yeah, dynamic, big yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I guess that's a big difference in the writing is, yeah, chord progression changes yeah. and kind of it kind of uh, it was really late on uh, in writing uh, in the band before I kind of actually would do songs where they don't change the progression. Yeah, I always thought you have to have a verse, you have yeah. to have a pre, you have to have a chorus. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's not, not always necessary. Th yeah, there's not like a a rule book. No, which is quite amazing. Which is which has been great. Like since I've been doing a lot more dance music. Yeah. Uh, Do you feel that it has influenced your your band writing as well? I haven't gotten fully back into oh, really? that okay. writing. I mean, we've done some <coughs> stuff, but it's mainly been um, tweaking older things, like that we had like ideas we had already had. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it will though, it will. Yeah, I can imagine. It's, um, I, <coughs> I, I guess Boxer, <coughs> I guess Boxer Rebellion is more, uh, it's it's mostly guitar and drum, yeah. drum based. Are you going to bring in maybe some electronic elements? We, also we've had some like synths and things yeah. like that, or like four to the floor kind of yeah. stuff with like a, you know, like a uh, an electronic kick, yeah. for instance, but nothing, yeah. I wouldn't say nothing too, uh, not too crazy. I like kind of keeping it separate. No, I like, sure, yeah. I yeah, I kind yeah. of, uh, it gives me another outlet. Yeah. It's the same with like, I guess, pop music or just yeah. singer-songwriter kind of music. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Back in the days when I used to, to rock music, I, I preferred it when I was a bit more purist, you know? Mm. So not, not too many <clears throat> um, synthesizers and drum computers and stuff. Yeah. Unless it was kind of more, I guess maybe uh, industrial music or something but it's nice when it's you know at least the drums especially although having said that i think a band like radiohead kind of mm. but you know they're the, probably the unicorn in music anyway so they can do whatever they want yeah they can do it <laughs> it's gonna sound great yeah. no they're excellent
Yeah. I was always been a big fan of theirs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, I guess, in dance music, you can have a lot of natural elements. You can, it. especially nowadays. Yeah. I think it's more accepted. Back in the 90s, when it all started, I think everything was mostly... Mostly um, electronic based, so yes. drum computer synthesizers. Of course, there were some some bands that were incorporating some kind of live element, like a live drum kit or something. Yeah. But I think the <coughs> the <coughs> excuse me, I think the best the best music at that time was mostly just um, pure electronic. But I think lately it's there's been a lot of crossovers between yeah. like bands. Is it a band? Is it a DJ? Is it a live set? Whatever. Who's that band out of New York? The James Murphy. Oh, LCD. LCD Sound System. Yeah. They're a great like example of like yeah. kind of indie dance. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they were. Yeah, I think they were definitely uh, at the forefront of doing something new at the time. I think nowadays it's Who Made Who is amazing. Yeah. They used to be a band as well. I remember yeah. seeing them like 20 years ago as an actual rock band, mm. <laughs> which is fun. And now they just kind of make, um, I don't know, I guess they call it indie indie dance or whatever. Yeah. But it's it's great music. Yeah. They um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Really the funny good. thing is before um before we worked together, I, I was actually playing quite a lot of your tracks already. Like oh nice. dance tracks. Um and often, most of the time, I guess you, you, um, your name wasn't on the on the music. Sometimes, yeah, it depends. Uh you know, I I heard Recently, you play my Duke Dumont track. I did this. Yeah, that one Duke, exactly. Yeah. I think that one, but that's a new one, right? Yeah, new yeah, one. yeah. But like Clapton in the past, yeah. a lot of Clapton. But stuff. you did. You also did one with um, Reset Robots. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah was that? Know. How yeah. did that come about? I think I got like a maybe an instrumental, and I just kind of. Oh yeah, so they asked you, yeah. or he asked you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but um, in like an effort to not kind of be on too many things uh, mm -hmm. sometimes okay yeah yeah so you you still lend your art but yeah prefer to stay in the background mm. okay so it that's, depends it yeah. depends on you know i think that that's particularly that track was so so amazing i played all what was the name again wow i'm so bad with track titles and <laughs> i can't actually remember yeah but it was i can't even remember i'd have to yeah, have to but it's a really amazing track. <coughs> I think that's um, that's probably my favorite track of yours. Um, that's great. Thanks. That's th that I knew of at the yeah. at the time, um, not knowing that I was actually using it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I was talking to someone recently, kind of said similar things like, "Oh, I play your songs a lot," but I didn't know. It yeah, would be, yeah, yeah. I think your voice uh, really lends itself for dance music mm. funnily enough you know not not every voice has a has the right range or the right um sound for for dance music i think yours really fits very well with uh i don't know it's hard it's hard to explain why but uh thank, thank you yeah I, I i feel like um i did a lot of work with like clapton but then when when i kind of got into more of it um i feel like Oddly enough, I changed my style a little bit from what it was like uh, in the band. Yeah. And I think that's because lockdown happened mm -hmm. and I was working from home and I live in a flat. Yeah. And in an effort not to piss off our neighbors, I would, I think I sing quieter. Oh, really? And, and I sing more in falsettos or I sing just a little bit different. And yeah. uh, in that maybe made more of a different sound which is yeah. on more of the dance stuff i think so yeah I did. that's true actually i think a lot of the i mean maybe it's a natural thing in, in a band especially when you're uh when you're performing you need to kind of be heard right yeah you need to make yourself like um be heard between like the the, the heavy guitars and drums and all that mm. and i guess when it's electronic music especially when you're recording in the studio it's just you can make yourself sound as loud as you want. Yes. Like even with all the production and stuff. Yes. Without singing too loud. Yes, exactly. And I think sometimes it, the, the not so ex super expressive singing fits dance music probably a bit more because mm. you're, you're kind of... <coughs> um, yeah, I think with the, the production, everything can be built around your voice. And um, I think that's what I try to do with you and I as well. You know, I think your voice is very prominent, but 
it's not taken over by too much uh, um, heavy stuff in the background. Yeah. No, I really like it. I love that um, synth uh, lead synth you put at the end. Is that like the um, like the do LFO do 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 type? Do do do. Thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that thing. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. I always try to do it. That's funny. You know, sometimes um, when I mentioned earlier, techno being a bit linear. And sometimes, you know, after you've like played the whole thing and then after the last drop, things come back. You're like, it needs something else than yeah. just what's already been played. And then I think a little lead is kind of nice. I've done that in quite a few other tracks and it works quite well because it just lifts the track to another, just another level, even yeah. though nothing is changing so much. But um, I'm, I don't, I don't really play keys, so for me it's quite difficult writing. Uh, <laughs> How did writing you do a that? Melody. Then? How did you do that? Then? I, I guess I did play it on keys, and I, I've been playing piano for the last five years. I try. Um, I'm trying to practice quite a lot, and but I'm not amazing, and especially if you, if I have to perform on the spot, it's it's a bit like uh, <laughs> <laughs> what to do now. <laughs> I'm the same. Yeah, I can play kind of like chords, block yeah. chords. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. one thing I've noticed with a uh, like songwriters is um, th some of the guys that are just really, really good are amazing pianists. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I, that's amazing. But how? But I guess you play guitar, or yeah, I play guitar. Yeah. Um, but a lot of I think a lot of the ideas I always have are kind of piano based. Yeah, or like uh, at least in dance music, not yeah. the band. But um, but yeah, I really like that synth line. Yeah, and nice. Then, um, what did you had what was that what was the was the sound or yeah, what was the sound i have no idea man <laughs> <laughs> i um i tried making a, a, st a studio um, production video but i didn't use any hardware no since right it's all like software you yeah. know it's, it's probably omnisphere or I I, right. I'm, I'm sure you know like a lot of the sure. software stuff right it could be anything honestly you know um maybe serum or something and I guess I just try to to play something that you know lift lifted up the track a bit more mm. and, and something like a bit of a lead, and I don't know. It's it's usually something that happens really quick, and then I'm like, do I like it? I'm not so sure. And then I play it a few times, and I'm starting to actually <laughs> really yeah. enjoy it. it. Was another track a remix I did for a Dutch artist called May Salome, with a vocal in there by a Dutch singer. And at the end, I played kind of also a little very basic melody, and, and I was like, ah, it sounds a bit 80s, poppy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I sent it over to the artist and I said, like, do you like it? Is it not too cheesy? And I said, he said he liked it. I kept it in, and now I think it's my favorite part of the track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's one, one remix uh, um, that um, I'm, I'm friends with Ilka Klein. Yeah. And uh, I've done a bit of work with him as well. And I know you did. Yeah. The remix for Transmission. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. He's a really good dude. Yeah, a super nice guy, yeah. yeah. I really actually never met him before. Oh, right. um, yeah. I met him for the first time at Tomorrowland this year. Oh, right. Yeah, he came on, I, he came on stage when I was playing Transmission. Um, then I saw him the week after at, a, at another show, so... Right, yeah, he's great. He's <laughs> yeah, really good. Really lovely good guy, producer. yeah. But, um, yeah, the, the funny story about that, that track is that I played the original, I really liked it, but mm. I felt it, you know, it could... It could be, I wouldn't necessarily say better, but it could fit my my, yeah. my sound sure. a bit better. And then so I just asked him to send me the stems. And then I made a version for myself and it uh, turned out he liked it. And then... Do you prefer, what do you prefer, like <coughs> um, remixing or, or... I love remixing because it's fairly easy because, you know, there's... If it's a good track, then um, I already have a lot to work with. I don't mm. have to come up with anything, so I can just be lazy. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's the groundwork is done by somebody else, so yeah. I can just I just need a couple of hours. Yeah. Sometimes two hours. I mentioned the Tom Walker remix earlier. I I think I'd spent two two hours making the remix that I have so far, and I'm quite happy with it already. Yeah. And I've been playing it out, and I think it could be released the way it is, but I'm obviously not happy yet. Yeah. But um, do you like kind of because I know with you and I it, there are so many quite, versions. Yeah. yeah. Do you is it just kind of like you're playing it out and then you kind of like like just whittle it away like? Yeah, a little bit. I'm a, I'm a I'm I'm a crazy perfectionist, which is super annoying. I mean, it's good. It's a good thing. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I guess so. You know, like the first eighty percent, ninety percent is fairly easy. Yeah. Sometimes you know what I said. You can I can do it in 
in two hours. I think also you and I, I wrote uh, the chord progression fairly quickly with, uh, and I chose the sounds and it was, I was like, oh, this sounds really nice. But then it was, at first it sounded very quiet and very intimate. And I thought this, this is nice like this. But then um, I was playing around with it. I was, and I thought I just need to play. I didn't have a version that I could play in my sets because right. it was too soft and it just wouldn't work. And I was like, okay, I need to put a stronger kick and you know, some, some harder percussion. And then, you know, that's kind of the beginning of a long journey because yeah. I want to keep the intimate vibe, but I want it to sound really good and I want to be able to play at peak time. Yeah. And that's, that's I, that for me, that's, yeah, that's the most, most difficult thing. Well, from the videos, it seems like it, uh, from what I've seen, I, yeah. I haven't been to a gig, but it seemed to go down really it, well. It works really well. Yeah, I, the last time I played it was... Uh, few days ago in Colombia and everyone's like clapping in the break, you know, like you see that it's yeah. like a concert, you know, everyone's yeah. <laughs> like this and they're singing along. Even the, the song was just released two days before that, but I've been playing it quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but that's nice. That's, yeah, really that's nice. a really nice thing to see. And that's kind of what you want to achieve, you know, people recognizing it and being able to really dance to it. So that's, yeah, it took quite a long time to get a version where I was like um, happy with the final results. So you're doing an album? Is that yeah. What's, what yeah. The uh, this is the first single of uh, my new album, yeah. Right. Is, um, that fin is it finished? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I would love to say it's finished. 80% of it? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. 80% um, of the time, 90% of the time goes <laughs> in the last 10%. Yeah. And 10% of the time goes in the first 90%. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's the way it is. But um, yeah, there's, there's, there's quite, a, quite a few tracks on there and... Again, I'm t I always want to be able to play as many tracks as I can. Back in the days, I used just used to make it, and that's it. And I wouldn't really play my music so much because it didn't suit my DJ sets. Mm -hmm. But now I want to want to be able to play it. So, um, yeah, that's that's again the challenge. But um, it's okay. I think there's there's some real songs in there as well. Is that that kind of whole things? Is that have been a gradual change for uh in dance music i think like, as far so. as like playing your own stuff as opposed to playing just records you like i feel the last um 10 years it's become more and more important to make your own music as an artist or at least release music on your own name because a lot of people don't even make their own music yeah um but yeah it's important to get your 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 name out like mm. that um there's always <coughs> people that become uh, well known for other things then yeah. i mean there there might be amazing djs or and making records is more like a side job but yeah for me i think it's i've always enjoyed making music i come from a very musical family so um i guess it's kind of in my dna yeah what so you what happened what changed like when you were into your like uh into rock, uh, rock yeah, music yeah, yeah. i was just i guess it was like the mid 90s and this was when let's say the chemical brothers first yeah. um became uh yeah i was big i was a teenager around then yeah, yeah i was i was loved that and i think that was a, was a great a great time um they they brought something i guess bands like nine inch nails kind of introduced more electronic things mm -hmm. for me and then chemical brothers was kind of a next step and then underworld um, same you're you're Sound like Prodigy, probably. Yeah, maybe, for sure, of course. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, just <coughs> I think all these, time. all these kind of <coughs> crossover bands that you know had a had some vocals in them and had some rock elements or something that I could relate to mm. quite easily. But then once I was into that, I started listening to minimal techno and right. like the 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 real the real underground techno stuff. And that then I was like, okay, I'm. I think I found my new <laughs> yeah your lane my new music yeah, yeah. your your yeah. yeah that's great I was kind of uh, I was I was really into Brit pop so it was oh, kind of okay. like um, what led me to Chemical Brothers was things like because Noel Gallagher from yeah. Oasis did like a few songs and then that kind of led to other things or Underworld because of like Train Spotting or yeah or yeah yeah like uh, yeah. But yeah, it was a good, good was few a good, years of yeah. music. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, I was a big at the time. I, I liked some Britpop. Some some of it. I wasn't a big Oasis fan. Uh, I think it was a bit too melodramatic for me. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, I didn't even like the first Radiohead album. I think I had it on CD, but I didn't. For some reason, it didn't really click with me. The second one, the bands, yeah, yeah, was much more my thing. And then I love. I think my favorite band of that time was Supergrass. Oh, excellent! I think they were yeah. the best ones. They were fantastic. Yeah, I saw them. They were, <coughs> they were the. Uh, my wife and I went and saw them. That was like the last gig I went to before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was at. at Alexandra Palace in London, and I, f I mean, I guess they call them super spreader events. <laughs> it was probably one of those kind of things where everyone got COVID yeah, from exactly. it. But, uh, wow. Oh, how we laugh. No. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. no, yeah. Little did we know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. There, there, there must have been a great stage presence. You should get uh, Gaz Coombs to... Do I, uh, Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be, uh, could be an interesting one. Yeah, I don't know if his voice would very Maybe be su not. very Maybe suitable. Not, I mean, there's there's other bands I'm really a big fan of, but um, you know, if it's what I said before, I think your vocal, your your voice really lends itself for dance music, and and some other people, some other singers might be too expressive or not the right tone of voice or something. Mm. I'm also a big. One of my favorite bands is Granddaddy from the U.S. Oh, wow, yeah. And they're incredible. I've, I've always thought about asking, uh, what's his name? The Are they singer. still making music? I think it's the, the guy, the singer went kind of solo. I think he, he kind of wrote all the music and he right. was kind of like, I think he was getting a bit uh, fed up um, being the lead, lead yeah. artist and not getting the happened, credits. I think that happens a lot in bands. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like a... And from my experience of like, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of an introvert. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess I'm sensitive. <laughs> and so you, <clears throat> when you have like some success or you're, uh, or all of a sudden, I mean, not like, you know, like granddaddy, they were kind of, they probably were nominated for loads of awards. Mm -hmm. People wanted the, a piece of them. They wanted their time. And then I guess if some, I don't know, I don't, I don't know them at mm -hmm. all, but maybe that's what it, it could be as well. Where you yeah. just kind of like, I don't, I don't like the attention. Even yeah. though, even yeah. though you want the attention. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a weird kind of. I mean, I think that's something that I sometimes feel as well. You mm. know, um, it's nice to have the attention, but it takes a lot of time and sometimes you have to say a lot of the same things and it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's okay. You know, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's important to, to be out there. Yeah. Do you, um, cause I know what it's like touring as far as like a, a, a band on a tour bus and things yeah. like that. And it's pretty exhausting. Um, I mean, I think the average person out there, has no sympathy for me for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, what <laughs> I about? Do. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, is in you know, you were just in uh, South America yeah. the weekend, and you were in a different country every day. Yeah. Do you? Uh, do you ever like? Are you ever able to enjoy that? I mean, besides the gig. Like, uh, is it, do you ever have time to kind no, of No, I do don't anything? have I don't have so much time to explore cities to be honest. I sometimes do. Like when I go to South America usually it's uh two weekends yeah. and then in between um I might have some some days off. So that's nice, but when I get to a show usually um I need to sleep because I didn't sleep. Yeah. You know, South America for instance is, is huge, so yeah. there's always connecting flights and then leaving early and and arriving late. Um Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get dinner at the hotel and yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's, you know, it's it's not as romantic as it may sound, but... Um. Yeah, no, the, it, it <laughs> does sound very romantic, but it's the... Yeah. The reality is... The reality is a bit uh, a bit more harsh sometimes. I think especially in dance music, because, like, the the backdrop of a lot of, a lot of it is, like, I'm in Bali and um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's the oceans in the <laughs> background and everyone's like, yeah. but as far as like the actual DJ, you, you're there and then you leave. Yeah, no, it's really true. And also we, you know, we kind of work at night, I guess with the band, you are, you're done at like, what is it? 11 PM or yeah. something. 
Um, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It yeah. might be like 4 a.m. or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for us, it's more like 4 a.m., 5, 6 sometimes, yeah. and then sometimes no sleep. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not complaining about that. Uh, that's just part of the job. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just super lucky to be able to do what I do. Yeah. You know, I, honestly, every day I'm thankful for that. Are you, uh, what are you up to next then? I know you do, you got a few things here this week. Mm -hmm. This week I have um, a big show on Saturday, which is uh, in a, a round gas holder kind of building. Oh, I've heard of that I don't of know if you place. heard about this place. Yeah. It's super nice. Um, but that's that's basically techno. I don't think I'll even be playing uh, you and I because it's, right. you know, that's, I think it's going to be a pretty fast-paced uh, right. techno set. Um, I did play last night in a pop-up shop here for a, um, a techno labels uh, kind of uh, show, but a little bit too fast. So it's, uh, are you playing <laughs> tonight as well? Are you playing? I'm I'm doing a little show tonight somewhere in um, somewhere I guess in the House Music Museum. Oh. Yeah, it's a house music museum. You there is one, yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? Only in Amsterdam. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and Do you live in Amsterdam? I live in Amsterdam. Yeah, um, like by ten minutes away. Oh, that's like, nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, maybe. How long are you here, actually? I leave Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to come drop by my studio uh, one of these days, uh, yeah, more than welcome. To. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm going off to Armada next. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm doing the, my own thing there t tomorrow night. Radio show and like a little... Um, Radio show at, uh, yeah, at, at the studio. Arman studio. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing tonight? Tonight? Uh, or at the oh, no. Oh, uh, uh, I was going to say, I'm not doing anything tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I'm uh, uh, just a songwriting session. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. With I don't who? think I'm singing. No? No, I don't think so. I kind of try and like, if I can not sing, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take that opportunity. So you'll write for someone else to sing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which sometimes is fun because I can write or help help write songs that um, aren't uh, down in my lane. Mm -hmm. They're more like maybe pop kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. I didn't know. Yeah. It Interesting. Depends. And yeah. then do you choose uh, singers as well or? Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends on who's in the room. Or, yeah. um, but I, I have like a, a fairly good network of other singers that I yeah. like to w work with, and oh, sometimes we'll trade back and forth who who sings yeah. it. Oh, uh, wow. Or it depends on like I guess, what the song's like. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I might have some more album work. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> lying around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Well, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Yeah, yeah please do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because uh, the funny thing is the the you and I, how that came about was very unusual for me. I'd never worked with uh, thing music that was sent to me as, I mean, I've done remixes, and this you know it could be like kind of like a remix as well. Hmm. But it was you. I was I got sent your your top lines. And I thought it was the out of all the top lines I received, and there were many. I, I thought it was really outstanding and for me to work a track around that like i've never worked together like that i've usually send over instrumentals and then someone sings on top of it so is like was it one of the first like working to an acapella yeah basically, basically yeah um yeah that song um i worked with uh the melody men who are um two uh two ladies from uh in london and um <coughs> and it was our first ever session yeah. uh, together we've done a couple <coughs> of things since and uh and we worked to uh, a friend of mine's instrumental dominic felsman and um we just kind of yeah wrote wrote to that yeah and and which gave us some inspiration and then yeah it ended up in a completely <laughs> different, which is, I think is great. I think it's, it's exciting. Yeah. I hope no one, no one got offended. No, <laughs> along the not way. in the slightest. <laughs> no, because, you know, with a lot of these songs, like, uh, especially in like in the songwriting kind of like gamut, mm -hmm. uh, you write like, I don't know, 
25 songs a month or something. Wow. Or, you know, maybe not that many, maybe yeah. 20 songs a month. But yeah. you write a lot. And the whole thing is just writing, write something that you love yeah. and kind of move on. So sometimes things just kind of sit there. And, yeah. And it's when they get used, especially by someone uh, like yourself, it's it's only a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, this this is something. I mean, I have a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of tracks, probably like a thousand, that in my in my studio, right. you know, <laughs> that, are, that are probably never going to get finished. Yeah. So I guess it could be kind of the same thing. But um, yeah, I'm not familiar with these writing sessions where you just like where it's almost like a machine, you know, you just yeah. write things and then okay, next one. <laughs> yeah. Let's stall this and uh, we'll save it maybe someone will uh, use it later on yeah yeah it, it can be quite uh clinical and that's not good mm -hmm. i don't think um it sometimes uh what i prefer is like when it's um like you're just hanging out and having a nice time hanging out yeah and then you're like let's that like, kind of start something yeah and and it never feels like work yeah, um, yeah. Because, like, at the end of the day, I think no matter how successful a song is, the most, the, to me, the, the time I'll appreciate it is when I'm making it, as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, even if it does well, like it, watching numbers and stuff, you only get so, so much satisfaction out of yeah. that. Yeah, it's true. kind of like, because yeah. it's, it's always the thing of, like, well, it hit that, hit that point. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then you're like, well, I wonder if he'll go to this this next level. And then you never, there's never any like kind of real satisfaction in that. Yeah, you think there is. But yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's actually. kind of like I guess social media and likes and all. Yeah, that kind of I stuff. think it's also because you've been doing this for uh, for a long time. Maybe at the beginning you're really excited about. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's an element of being jaded. I yeah, think. a little bit, <laughs> yeah. which is which is uh, which is fine. I mean, that's yeah. just the way it is, and I think it makes you focus probably on the things that are important. Exactly. Yeah. I agree.